guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Adeze and I'm a YouTuber based in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. I'm a mom and I have two lovely daughters, Cora and Ava. And yeah, if you're new to this channel, you're highly welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, you guys are my G. You guys know how it is on this channel. So thank you so much for coming back. So anyway, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about my experience as a stay-at-home mom, what I think about the concept of being a stay-at-home mom, um, how it's working out for me, you know, just basically my thoughts on the idea of being a stay-at-home mom. Yeah, if you'd like to hear my thoughts on this, then just keep on watching. guys like two or three videos ago the video where i talked about my life as a stay-at-home mom it was just a lazy vlog about my life as a stay-at-home mom so in that video basically i talked about every pretty much everything i'm going to say in this video i can't talk about it in that video but while editing it i cut it out because it was just too long you know it was too long to include into a vlog so i decided to make a sit down video about it. and after that i also got a comment on one of my videos that really prompted me to just say you know what i was actually on the right track talking about it in that video but let me just talk about it you know separately and the comment is let me read the comment out for you guys two questions I really struggled with this before I eventually figured it out. Most women, most young women transition, or should I say, are evolving faster these days from the workspace into stay at home moms and entrepreneurship. Doing business from home or online, having that family and income bringing in balance. I hated being a structure. I hated being in a structured and confined environment with a passion. I thought I was the only woman that felt like this when I used to struggle to go to jobs until I eventually quit job life and went into self-employment and transitioned into business. I'm seeing more women opt out for this lifestyle and you cannot put money on how it feels for a woman or a mother to live in the fulfillment of their desires. Are there challenges? Sure. But I see women bloom and thrive in the mental in this mental space. Even if funds are tight, life goes on. Some people say save before you quit a job or go on a business venture. I say figure what you want and go for it. You will learn and adjust faster with no safe, with no safety net. Not for the faint of hearts do, but stories for other days. Kindly give me your two cents on this subject would appreciate. Okay, so yeah, thank you so much Doreen for your comments I'm going to also actually address all these things in that video. I don't even know why I just cut it out But anyway, yeah, it's better for me to address it this way. Yeah, so basically a stay-at-home mom is a mother Who basically stays at home to take care of her kids. She doesn't have a regular nine-to-five job She doesn't really have a boss you know her bosses are her children and her husband and stuff like that so basically a housewife and a stay-at-home mom okay so um one thing i'm going to say first of all before i even start this video is this being a stay-at-home mom is not something a lot of women actually choose a lot of women who are stay-at-home moms now they didn't actually go through life thinking so i'm going to get these degrees and then when i finish i'll get married and just become a stay-at-home mom i'm sorry that's just the truth many of us had big dreams of you know working in corporate environment of being our own bosses you know of you know just just killing the game just you know conquering the world those were the dreams that so many of us had while we were growing up while we were going to school you know when we graduated and while you know before we got married that was a dream for so many of us but after we got married, first of, in fact, before we got married, first of all, many of us could not even get good jobs. That's just the truth. Many of us, many of us applied and applied and applied and did not get good jobs, okay? Some of us got jobs that were just not worth it. Some of us already worked and realized that, nah, this is not, this, this is not going to cut this for me. Especially once I start having kids, okay? So once you start having kids, sometimes you are forced to sit down and think about your life differently. You are forced to make changes to you know your dreams and your aspirations and what you thought your life was going to be so just have it in mind before you start criticizing anybody or you know talking about start home moms being lazy and this and that just know that many women did not actually you know from the get-go decide to be stay at home moms so many women did not you know many of us just started to reevaluate things as things began to unfold okay another thing you have to consider or well from my perspective being a stay-at-home mom being able to stay at home and raise your kids the way you want 
is actually a privilege it's actually a blessing some women cannot afford to that they cannot hunger will kill them at home that's just the part of life okay that's just the way life is so when you see a woman who stays at home taking care of her kids to me from my own perspective it's actually a privilege i don't take it for granted in any way like i really appreciate the fact that i can stay at home and i can take care of my kids and we are provided for so it's actually a privilege so if you're a stay-at-home mom and you're feeling like you know the world is about to come to an end you're feeling like you, you are useless or you don't have anything to offer like that's why you're a stay-at-home mom i'm sorry you have to change your mindset because in case you did not notice so many people cannot afford to they want to but they cannot even do it so it is a privilege for you to be a stay-at-home mom so make the most of it okay make the most of it be the best stay-at-home mom that you can be be a professional housewife yes be a professional housewife be the best at home mom that you can ever be I i'm sorry to say but i'm just saying this so that you can pick yourself up if you have i know so many i know so many um, stay at home moms who feel very dejected, they are depressed, they feel sad that they feel like they're not, are not offering life anything, okay? And then we keep seeing these videos where people keep talking about you being a colossal failure, we have been a stay at home mom, is not, it's not the way to go, you must find something to do, you must do something, you must no longer, you must get a job, you must get, you know? And so many women ha cannot get jobs, even the ones that can get jobs, their jobs are, they are, they are being paid something so so little, not even worth them leaving home every single day. So at the end of the day, nobody should be shamed for their choices okay whether you are a stay-at-home mom you are a career woman you are an MD CEO, you are a businesswoman you have a nine to five you don't have a, whatever it is that everybody chooses to do nobody should shame to be shamed for their choices okay so as a stay-at-home mom be the best stay-at-home mom that you can be let people see you and be like wow i wish to be a stay-at-home mom if this is what it is to be a stay-at-home mom i aspire to be a stay-at-home mom they should create a course in school for stay-at-home moms to go and study and they should use you as a case study like look at this person she's a stay-at-home mom but i mean she doesn't look like the typical or the you know stereotypical stay-at-home mom she doesn't act like her life is over you know have this sense of pride and dignity in what you do me i'm very proud to be a stay at home mom i say it everywhere i'm proud to be a stay at home mom i am a professional housewife yes i'm a professional you guys need to come and pay pay me to teach you how to be a professional housewife <laughs> no my life is not perfect though i'm not put together two for seven i'm not organized two for seven there's so many parts in my life that are lacking but at the same time i i they try and they try okay so yeah uh, many of you who are being shamed for being stay at home moms, you are shamed because you know they try at the end of the day. <laughs> you're not trying. And what I mean by you're not trying is that because you feel this sense of shame, you are even shaming yourself because you feel the sense of shame, it, come, it comes across as you are just a nobody or you know. Anyway, so yeah, all I'm just trying to say is that nobody should be shamed for their choices, okay? And also remember that children cannot raise themselves in a vacuum how, how do i put it children do not children do not raise themselves okay at the end of the day somebody has to raise the children yes if you're if it's not your husband it is you if it is not you it is a house help if it's not a house help it is the society it is the neighbors it's your family but somebody is going to raise your kids so ask yourself now that i have kids who do I want to raise my kids? Is my job or is pursuing a career at this time in my life, you know, the best option for my family? Okay? And one thing that I keep, I keep seeing with people is that people often forget that once you decide to bring, because yes, it's a choice, once you decide to bring children into this world, you have to cater for them, you have to care for them, you have to factor them into your life. They are not an inconvenience. You are the inconvenience because you chose to disturb them in heaven when they were enjoying themselves. You were like, no, I need kids, I need kids. You decided to bring them into the world, okay? So you are first and foremost a mother before you are any other thing in this entire universe. Yes, being a mother even trumps being a wife, okay? You are first of all a mother because you made the conscious choice to go and bring kids into this world, okay? And it also goes for men. Don't think I'm just saying this because it's women, okay? The moment you choose to become a father, you have now put that above every other thing in your life, 
okay so once you feel as a father i'm sorry you have failed as a human being that's just the truth i don't care whether you become the uh, uh, the richest man in the entire universe or you become the richest woman in the entire universe or you become the MD CEO you have 10, 10 companies you're running 10 companies you have this you have that you're manufacturing that as the moment you fail as a father you have failed as a human being because that is the decision that you consciously chose to you know to do okay even if the child was a surprise child you know that sex brings children so don't tell me oh the woman pinned pregnancy on me that's why i'm a deadbeat that i did not plan to be a father she pinned on me but you know that sex brings children whether you protected yourself or not or you think you protected yourself or not it you know that it's a possibility for any kind of protection you do to fail so at the end of the day if you fail as a parent you have failed as a human being point blank period so when you are choosing who is going to raise your kids you better think twice because we've seen cases of the society ruining kids we've seen cases of house helps molesting children now most of you should not have house help. i mean i have a house help i don't think you should not have house helps but how much control are you giving to the house helps to take care of your children how much responsibility are you giving to the house help are you have you relegated your position as a mother to the house help some of you are just basically your children's you know relative that's what you are you are a mother but you are just your child's, your child's relative you are a father but you are just your child's relative it is the house help it is your family members it is the neighbors it is someone else that is, that is your children's mother and father so before you get married you know before you choose to have children before you choose the number of children you want to raise these are things that you should put into consideration okay you should also put into consideration that you might have to give up your career to take care of your kids properly you might have to okay you don't have to but you might so when you're thinking about all these things if career is what you really want to do with your life then please go for it and stick to it okay you do not have to have kids i keep saying this thing you don't have to have kids it's not a requirement to make heaven okay but once you have kids it is a requirement for you to make heaven for you to raise your kids right yes once you have kids, once you bring children into this world, it has not been added to one of the requirements for you to enter heaven. If you do not raise your kids right, if you neglect your kids, if you maltreat your kids, if you put your kids in harm's way, if you do not raise your kids right, then it is now a requirement for you to enter heaven. So choose wisely. Do you want to add an extra requirement for you to enter heaven, for you to make heaven? Okay, yeah. So it might sound like a joke, but I'm actually being serious right now. Yes, I'm being serious. So yeah, in my own case, several factors contributed to me being a stay-at-home mom, okay? One of them is that I do not have family in Port Harcourt. I don't have, I don't have anybody that I can leave my kids with and say, oh, I'm going to work. So even though I have the house help, grandma can, you know, be supervising the house help or grandma is around or if anything, happens i can quickly call grandma or grandpa or you know or, or this auntie or this uncle or my sister or my brother i do not have any family in Port Harcourt and my husband's job requires him to be away from home half of the month okay so half of the year my husband is not around even though it's it's, it's monthly if i um put together how much time he's not around it's basically half of the year he's not around so i don't have that luxury of just saying i want to go and work a, a nine to five and i mean in nigeria it's basically five to five a.m to to eight p.m or nine p.m and if you're in lagos it can be 10 11 p.m okay i don't have that you know I, I can't choose that because i now have kids and then i don't have you know a good support system here to enable me to go back to work okay so there are many women who go to work but they are they are really um they are really their children are well taken care of because they have a very good support system me i don't have it and i and raising my kids by myself is actually a priority for me so that is why i chose to be a stay-at-home mom okay and i can't just leave my kids to be raised by house help and gates man i'm sorry i can't and I, anybody that is doing it some people actually your house helps are actually better than you at raising your own kids so it's not it's not always a bad thing to have other people help to raise your kids because some of you you are better off not even having kids in the first place so the house help raising your kids or neighbors or society raising your kids is actually better than even you doing it yourself so it's not always a bad thing but i'm just saying in my own case i cannot leave my gate and house help to taking care of my children that is why i opted to be a stay-at-home mom and one thing we have to recognize is that being a stay-at-home mom doesn't mean that you're not adding value i don't know where people get that mindset from because i keep seeing talks i even saw one recently by apostle suleiman or something where he was talking about don't be a housewife it's not good you have to have them um, um you have to hey how did he say that thing 
that you should, your presence should be felt or you should make yourself relevant in your husband's life or something like that. I don't know how, I, don't, I can't remember what he was saying in that video. But basically, and then we've seen that um, popular video by Funke, is her name Funke? Funke and DJ Mo or something. That pastor, pastress, pastor, that female pastor that you know said uh, if you cannot give your husband one million naira as a, as a woman, then you're a closer failure or something like that. Yeah. You know, so we keep seeing this things and I keep asking myself, okay, let's look at it this way. All right, all of us should go out and pursue money. All right, fine. Now, when you go out to pursue money, you are going to have to have a nanny or a house help or, you know, driver, um, you know, caretaker, lesson teacher, all those things to keep your children occupied while you're pursuing money till you come back and miss them. Sometimes you meet them asleep or about to go to bed, okay? Now, are you not going to pay for all those services? Are they free? I'm not going to pay for them. Forget Nigeria. You know, you know, in Nigeria, our own is even different. In Nigeria, you just go to the village, bring one person from the village and pay her, you know, one chicken change, and then she will now start. You will now hand over your family to her, hand over your household to her. You know, one girl, you just go from the village. One of us even bring underage children and hand over our families to underage children. Okay. Some people actually don't even pay house helps in Nigeria. They'll say, Oh, I will train her. But the I will train her is like after three years of her working for you for nothing. Then you now train her in school or you now pay her off to go to you know go to school. So that is why some of us have mouths with talking rubbish in Nigeria because we are not paying good money for for um helps. Go abroad where you are paying good money, you pay good money for a nanny, pay good money for daycare, pay good money for drivers, as if they even have drivers self. Pay good money for drivers, for um, you know, housekeepers, for cleaners, for stuff like that. Where you have to pay good money, you will see that you that you are out there working, your mind you are working, you are working for nothing because all your salary is going to go into um, paying all these people for these services. That is how it is in the civilized world. In Nigeria here, yeah, we just bring someone from the village and pay them nothing. So we feel like because we are paying them nothing, then a stay-at-home mom is actually worth nothing. That's how it is. That, that is how many people see it. Because you don't see monetary value in what she's doing, then you feel like she's not adding any value to your life. No, let her go and look for work, then, then find someone else to do all those things. Let me see who will do it for you for free. I mean, in a civilized world now, and at the end of the day, all these people that we bring from the village and we pay nonsense salary, people that are not even trained to be house helps or to be cleaners or to be nannies or to be caretakers or to be, you know, children's teachers. When you bring all these people into your household, you will see the difference. You see how they treat your kids. You see how they treat your home. Your home is a mess. Everything is upside down. Your children are just, you are just being maltreated and treated anyhow. There's always a difference, okay? If you want to pay good money for good services, you know how much you're going to pay for those services. So at the end of the day, is it really worth it if you are doing some kind of job that is not paying you enough just because oh I, I must be a career woman I must and that's not even about nine to five it's even also about people who do business I keep saying this thing some women who are doing business today they are better off just sitting at home sitting at home taking care of their children they are better off staying at home okay you see her she's driving a big jeep a big jeep that Oga bought for her she's better driving a big jeep she has a big shop you know her shop is packed to the brim Everything was bought with Oga's money. Every year, Oga is paying her house rent. Sometimes Oga is bringing money to pay her workers. Sometimes Oga is bringing money to stock up her shop. Her shop. So at the end of the day, you see some women. A lot of women in Nigeria are just recycling money or are just owning these businesses just to be busy, just to you know, just to ha live like they are. Oh, they are doing something. Meanwhile, if you look at the monetary, but if you look at how much are they really making from these businesses, it is not worth anything. Okay, they are better off staying at home and taking care of the children, but they're not doing it. So at the end of the day, instead of you to just choose to be a stay-at-home mom, you're not looking at those people and you're feeling like, oh, your life is lacking. Oh, maybe if I had this business, maybe if I if I was if I had this nine to five, you better appreciate where you are because even some nine to fives are not worth it. Okay, now me saying all these things, I am not saying that every woman who has a nine to five is, is I mean, her job is useless. No, there are actually women who <laughs> I, I I myself as I am, I'm aspiring to be like them. So yeah, all these things I'm just saying, I'm just trying to say that having a job or having a business is not necessarily better than being a stay-at-home mom in many cases. It's not necessarily better, okay? In some cases, it is the best option for that family, but in many cases, it's not necessarily better. So look at yourself, look at your family dynamics, and then decide for yourself if having a job is better for you, then please go and, and get a job. Because in many cases, in the, there are some families where 
husband and wife have to work if not hunger will finish them in that family yes that's just the truth there are many cases where husband and wife have to work there are many cases where husband you know has to work then wife can work if she wants or if she doesn't want to and there are many cases where husband has to work but wife has to stay at home if not things are going to go haywire there are many cases like that so look at your own unique family structure don't look at what people are saying or what people think or what your perceived uh, perception of uh, of staying at home or whatever look at your own peculiar situation and then choose what is best for you and your family but also make sure that you're, when you are making that decision your children are a priority okay so if it's that you're going to have a nine to five and your children are going to be well taken care of then by all means go and do your own thing okay now talking about having your own thing most of the arguments for people when they say women should get something to do and women should have their own thing is because a lot of women have nothing to fall back on and if the sole provider and the husband in these cases if anything happens to him that woman is finished okay if if that man leaves them tomorrow or if god forbid the man dies or loses his job then that family is going to crumble okay so that is the argument and i understand that argument but for me i see it this way okay look at your family and then decide now okay first of all i won't see people who say things like look at you before you go and buy pad you have to go and ask your husband before you buy a, a bra you have to go and ask your husband money for my gi you go and ask your husband that you know what kind of rubbish is that why can't why why must you go and ask your husband why can't you get something doing so that you can have money to do these things now my question is why are we attacking the women why are we not attacking the men so you or girl before you went to marry your wife didn't you know that she was menstruating or okay like you've already married her and you know that she doesn't have a job so it's not like you do not know you know she doesn't have a job or you know that she's not um doing any business or whatever she doesn't have money of her own many of you many of you married girls right out of university so you knew that she didn't have any job when you married her you but you had the hopes that she was going to get a job and then start contributing financially to your family so it was just a hope but it wasn't something that she already had okay so the first month when she came to ask you for money for pad you gave it to her the second month you gave it to her you are waiting for her the third month to come and ask you you don't know how period works you don't know that period is a monthly thing you don't know that that she has breasts to be buying bra for you don't know you don't know that she, she needs soap and cream and all those things you don't know you don't know that that's what a woman needs okay why can't you bring out a sum of money each month and give it to your wife for her upkeep that is the way it's supposed to be. Get out some money each month and give it to your wife for your for her upkeep. Why does she keep why does she have to keep asking you for this money every single month? Every single month she come and say I need part and you, you will give her the money, exactly the money for the for the part for that month. Then the next month she come back again, you'll still give her the exact money. So at the end of the day, when I see people talking down on this woman, yes, I understand that if you are unfortunate to be married to such a man, then you need to uh, you know find plan B. But at the same time, we should keep addressing these things too. So our men too will also know that. Every month you should find a sum of money that you can afford. Okay, I'm not saying that. I'm not giving any specific amount because it's still relative to every family. But look for a particular amount of money that you can afford and give it to your wife monthly. So she doesn't need to ask you. She already has those things taken care of. Okay, you can even give her bulk money so that she can buy things in bulk. She can buy her pad in bulk, her cream in bulk, her soap in bulk. You know, she doesn't need to ask you from um, um, every month. Okay, so at the end of the day, all these things is just wisdom. If we can all sit down and dialogue and use wisdom, Things that will not be coming up, that's aside, okay? And the second part is this. Now, as a woman, if your husband is very rich, okay, if your husband is rich or is comfortable and he can afford to give you, you know, a certain amount of money every month, that a good amount of money, why don't you save from it? Okay, me like me, I keep saying I am all about investment, saving and investment. I'm not really a business person, I don't really like business to be honest. Okay, I just do it because okay, I just need to be doing something. I really don't like business because I feel like in Nigeria, a lot of businesses businesses are not done right in Nigeria, and so many factors you know kill businesses in Nigeria. Okay, so, so I'm not really a business person, and I'm not seeing a nine to five that really makes sense for me right now. Okay, my CV is still there. I read English in university, so anybody that has a better job for me, please employ me. Okay, but yeah, I'm not really going a good job that is worth it and you know I don't really like business so I am all about saving and investing okay I keep telling people this is my camera I bought it with my own money and I was not working when I bought this camera okay I didn't have a salary from anywhere it was the money that my husband used to give me monthly that I was saving I was saving this money and investing it in treasury bills me and my sister myself was my account officer there okay every month when I have um, when I get out a particular savings, I carry the money and send it to her. So she will just keep. I kept accumulating. I kept accumulating money like that. When it gets to hundred k, you know, she will help me buy treasury bills. When it gets to two hundred k, three hundred k, that's why I kept saving money until I had good amount of money in my account. I was able to start um, my network marketing business. I was able to even 
register myself and register my children, register my family members with my own money. I was able to buy my camera, um, do a lot of things in the house with my own personal money that I was getting from my husband, okay? So if your husband can afford to give you a good amount of money, now when I'm saying good amount of money, don't think that my husband was giving me one big money like that. No, he was just giving me enough for me to survive. But I just thought about it. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not, you know, buying a shirt. I'm not going for a party. I'm not doing anything. I didn't need to spend too much money on you know upkeep once i have my my toiletries and i have you know maybe money to just buy one or two little things i saved the rest okay so that was how i was able to save i was able to delay gratification for so long i wasn't going anywhere i wasn't seeing anybody i was able to delay gratification for so long i was able to save money from what he was giving me and that was how i invested that money and you know i started building up my savings and i was able to do things for myself so the same way if your husband is giving you money please Save that money. I actually use Piggy Vest to save. So you can check my description box on my link. Use Piggy Vest and save money. And if you've already used my link before, try and transfer at least 100 naira to your account. If not, you're not going to get the 1000 naira free that has been given to you through my by using my link okay so make sure you use my link and then start saving at least 100 naira for you to get that free 1000 naira for signing up okay so the link is in the description box so anyway yeah so if your husband is giving you money like i said try and save up money and invest this money okay have an account that you don't touch that is just for investment okay use things like piggy vest and then if you don't want to just save, you can invest by also looking for platforms to invest in, okay? Reliable platforms. I'm not just saying all this nonsense that people can do these days. Look for reliable platforms. Look for treasury bills. Look for ways to save money and keep, you know, growing your money. Okay, that's how you make money. So if anything happens to your husband tomorrow, or if he loses his job, or if for any reason you guys separate or whatever, you have something to fall back on, okay? Even some people that have 9 to 5 jobs, if they lose their husbands today, they don't have anything to fall back on. Even people that have businesses, it's the same thing. So at the end of the day, this is advice for every married woman. This thing is wisdom. If you can't person that your husband likes to buy you very expensive gifts, and you're not using expensive gifts for anything, look at your bank account. Can, can your, is your bank account matching with the kind of gifts you are getting your bank account and the kind of clothes and shoes and bags and hair you are doing does it match your bank account if it doesn't match your bank account then you need to pipe down on those things and then save money when you've now saved because that's what i, I i've said this before my own goal right now is to save my money to an extent that the interest alone from my savings is what I'm, I'll use and live large. The interest alone for my savings, not my, not my, my, not my savings itself. The interest for my savings is what I'll use and live large. So that is my goal. So I feel like that is what everybody says. Not even just, not, not, not even just um, stay at home mom. Everybody should strive for that. So that worst case scenario, you still have something to fall back on, and your children are not are not um, neglected. Okay. So aside even saving and investing, you can also do little businesses from home okay little things from home to give you an income i've already done a video about five businesses to do as a stay at home mom i'm going to link it somewhere or in the description box i've already done it so there are businesses that you can comfortably do from home okay and i'm saying convenient businesses because if you actually want to be an entrepreneur from home it's going to be very difficult do you know that for you to actually grow a business in nigeria in fact in the world basically you are supposed to work twice as hard especially at, this, at the beginning stages you're going to work twice as hard to you know get that business going so at the end of the day you will see that you are, you are you have a business and you are staying at home but you're not even taking care of your children again because you have to put in the work so for a stay at home mom who has little kids there are convenient businesses that you can do and get extra income okay for me one of the things i'm doing is um youtube okay so i do youtube i do i look for little little ways to make money here and there okay so it's, there, are, there are convenient things that you can do and that brings another point many people think that many people when they see a stay-at-home mom they feel like ah this one her life is over no some of us being a stay-at-home mom is a temporary um what they call it arrangement okay for some of us being a stay-at-home mom is a temporary arrangement it is not what we're going to do for the rest of our lives okay some of us actually have plans for me personally i actually have plans for what i'm going to do after my kids do not need me as much okay when they are in senior senior primary or junior secondary okay especially when, junior, when, they go, when they've gone to boarding school and they're in junior secondary okay my kids don't need me to be a staff so i'm doing what now what am i staying at home doing okay so at that point i actually have plans for my life okay but for right now this is the best option for my life so that is how 
um, um, I see it. So I feel, I feel when you're when you're categorizing stay at home moms, you have to really see it as this is what this woman is doing for right now because she has little kids. Okay, of course when the kids are grown, then she can do something else with her life. Okay, people always make you look as if if you stay at home for a few years, life will be over. Your life will not be over. Okay, you can still get back into things. I can still make something for your life. It's never too late. Yes, there are some career advancements that you know you might not be able to attain at that point because you already lost so much time but at the same time it is a sacrifice you should be you should check some people will say ah after your parents have finished um putting you through school pay for your masters your this thing you are now a stay at home mom that isn't it isn't it um um isn't it unfortunate isn't it sad is it not is it not unfair that your parents finish training you in school and then you stay at home mom and my question is you that you are trained in school how many of you are actually doing jobs that are um, in line with what you read in school. Actually, in Nigeria, many of us, after we finish reading all the reading, university, master's, PhD, bobo tibo, after everything, we packed everything up and kept aside and started doing another job. Some people have even done three, 180 career change, switch, okay? They switch to entirely different career from what they read in school. So, it's not, at the end of the day, it is how well are you managing your life, okay? Are you a burden, okay? And that thing that people say, oh, she's a liability because she's a stay at home mom, that thing is rubbish. She's not a liability for crying out loud, okay? A liability is someone who has nothing to offer. A liability cannot be a stay at home mom. Except the stay at home mom is she's staying at home doing just stay at home for herself. She's not taking care of children. She's not, you know, raising kids or whatever. Then not you can say she's a liability. But if a woman is staying at home taking care of her children, she's not a liability, okay? okay? Because if she's not doing it, someone else is going to do it and go to pay the person to do it. Good money in the in, in same climate. You're going to pay the person good money. So she's not a liability. So when I see people say things like, don't be a liability, men do not want to marry a liability. I'm just like, how are you people even raising men? This is what are you people thinking? So at the end of the day, my whole point of doing this video is as a human being, especially as an educated human being, you should be able to make very informed decisions, very good informed decisions about how your life should go, especially once you decide to bring kids into the equation. The wife does not even have to be the one to sacrifice it. The husband can be the one to sacrifice it. If, as I tell people are getting married, the wife's job is way more, you know, paying better or way more fulfilling than the husband's job. He should stay at home and take care of the kids. Yeah, being a stay-at-home mom is not a disadvantage, it's not a bad thing, it's actually very healthy and very good for so many women to stay at home when they are raising small kids okay i keep emphasizing when your kids are still small okay don't have a 21 year old i'm telling me i stay at home mom and you have, don't have anything doing eh -eh, something must be wrong with you okay when you have small kids you are a nursing mother you know and that is the best option for you then please go for it and forget about what the whole world is trying to say okay don't let anybody shame you into doing a job or, or running a business that you know that is draining you spiritually physically mentally emotionally okay you're just a walking zombie you're just angry all the time you're raising you're shouting at your kids you are you are snapping at your kids you're just being an angry bitter woman because you, you the society wants you to be like that okay don't do that if if being a stay-at-home mom is what you've seen is best for you your personality you know your lifestyle your family then please go ahead and do it just make sure that you are the best stay-at-home mom there is okay it's just about excellence in whatever you choose to do okay put that talking some some people people like otedola's wives now does she need to work all these billionaires how many of them are you hearing that their wives are working so when we are saying all these stay at home mom things you better you better categorize it okay there are levels to this thing there are levels to it there are stay at home moms who can pay you your salary times 10 that's just the truth so there are levels so when we are saying uh, stay at home moms when we are categorizing stay at home moms you better you better differentiate levels to it there are levels <laughs> okay so at the end of the day a good mother is one who tries her best okay the best mother the good mothers are the mothers who despite their situation they are trying their best for their children chicken so yeah i think i've talked too much in this video this video will be like two hours long <laughs> so let me know your thoughts on this topic i did not exhaust everything i needed to say but um, I want to hear from your own opinion. I want to hear what you guys have to say about it, okay? Uh, what are your thoughts on being a stay-at-home mom? If you're a stay-at-home mom, do you feel fulfilled being a stay-at-home mom? So let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.